Welcome everybody to the uh, June 12th version of our Hyde Park update. Um, today we have myself, Carol, um, Amy Olson, um, Susan Bartlett, Ron Rajensky, and Joan Green. And uh, looks like we don't have an SEOC update, although I did just receive um, an email from them, so I can have a look at that while, um, while Ron gives an update uh, for the town. Okay, so the uh, governor had the 11 o'clock announcements, which are uh, turned into a tussle between the legislature and the governor. So there wasn't any um, proclaimed adjustments to how we're operating now. So the transition plans for uh, people being this town staff and how the public interacts with town facilities is ongoing. Uh, Kim sent out a, a sort of a notice yesterday for the town clerk's office and how she plans to operate from there. Uh, the, uh, the library, Amy's here to give an update on there. The softball, baseball folks are all wondering about how, how they're gonna operate as well. So they're working on it. Uh, you know, how, how are they going to have tournament tournaments or not to, um, this summer? Uh, Gary Nolan is working on that. So I think that everybody's trying to do the best they can at this point. Um, the select and other boards and committees are trying to, you know, be encouraged to attend in person at the lower level of the town office in the regular meeting room with the public still being invited to participate by phone only uh, for now. Uh, we could venture into letting some of the public there, but it, um, it we need to be thoughtful about that. So we want to be clear about what happens if, and what if, you know, what, how, how to word out so that we can do that safely. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't, I, th I think everybody's sort of settled down at this point. So, unless the governor does something on Monday, which is the end of the order uh, to change things, he may simply extend it or, and keep everything in place, which means we have the mask rule, the six foot separation, the meetings, uh, you know, 25 people or less in the public for civic organizations. Uh, the office space is still wear a mask if you have more than one person in the building. Uh, meeting rooms, I think, think we can get 10 or 20 people possibly downstairs but it'd be pretty tight so we're like I said we'll have to explain uh, a protocol for the town board and actually invite the public again uh we ain't that yet but uh last word me there just on COVID-19 in general so we'll, we'll we'll have more comment on that and I from the top right now, we having changes in the order. So some of the things that have been done over the last month are still in place. Uh, staff can work from home, still work from home, that kind of thing. Uh, and I and I believe I, everybody's following when they show up at the office, taking temperatures, doing the survey before they shift. They're showing signs. They're supposed to go home. So that if they're sick, they're not. They uh, or not ordered to quarantine by the doctor. So that's that's kind of how things are right now. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Um, okay. Susan. No, I think I think Ron Ron's got it covered. We just um, you know with the with the town offices, we're literally, and of course, the village is you know is there as well. Um, we just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tiny office. So we are, we're going to be limited, you know, by space and making sure folks stay apart for some time and, and until we have a vaccine, you know, I mean, that's just the, I think that's just going to be the reality of it. But folks seem to see Kim is non today, but, but um, we have a lot of stuff already online that, that uh, folks need looking for title searches and stuff. And it's um, as as people 
as people have had to make the adjustment to search for things that way, it seems to really be working out okay. Yeah, I just want to add one thing to what Susan just said. I, I that's the new reality if there's going to be one, uh, whether it's the call in, uh, call in by the public, or even members that are sick or can't attend, and and have that out always as an option. And as we transition to the offsite resources and on online resources, uh, people do get used to that and. Uh, they they go to five town offices online in half an hour, whereas before they were driving all over the county. So I think that's I, I see some of those being permanent changes at this point. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Val, hi. <laughs> um, I yeah, I'm Valerie Valcor, a public health nurse here covering the Lamoille County and some towns beyond. The latest summary data for March 5th through June 10th. Um, of course, we all know the spike that's been going on in Chittenden County. And I know, I, I don't, I personally don't have all the details, but I do know that every effort is being made to test and do contact tracing and to manage that. Um, and I think I think the state is doing the best is doing a great job with that. So, um, and we're also looking to uh, increase our data around diversity in terms of who is being tested in Vermont. I'm just looking to see the last I saw before today's report that Lamoille County's numbers have been very steady. Um, looking to see if there's anything new in this report, and I don't see it here, but we are at 29. We've been at 29 for a while. So, um, and in terms of specimen collection, testing, the health department here in Morrisville, we've been doing testing every Wednesday from 9 to 3. Um, and they're by appointment, although we do take walk-ins when people come. We are now at the Hyde Park VFW, and they've been a great, very gracious partner with us. Um, and we will continue to have those clinics there for the next two to three weeks that I know of. Um, they're slowly going to start paring down the numbers of the, clin of the registrant um, slots for those clinics. Um, but we've had a great show rate. We've um, we've done between 150 to 200 folks each time, and um, I I don't really have any other information unless people have questions for me. Now this is Susan. Do in the where you have you know where we have the counts like the 29 cases. Um, that just tells us how many people tested positive, what we don't, and I'm just curious if the health department has, you know, do we know how many, when you have a number, how many people were hospitalized, how sick were people, is there any, or it's just, it's a positive test. It could be it's a positive test and you showed nothing. It could be it's a positive test and you're miserable, right? <laughs> right. And um, our website has a plethora of information. Um, and they they do change the format from time to time as um, to kind of accommodate the the types of questions and the type of information that people are most interested in. And we do have we do get data in terms of hospitalized and people who are being monitored per hospital service area. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. So we do have that and. Um, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to do a little digging, and and I can follow up with some information in terms of of how many how many people have been tested in our who live in Lamoille, and yeah, I'll see what, what more specific data I can get. Yeah, it's just I again, just it, it's interesting to know sort of sort of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that's 
people are really interested in, in knowing where they stand and how safe they are. And, you know, um, and the other piece to, that I think is good to look at, and I'm sorry, I don't have it at my fingertips right now, but um, what the, oh, the rate what is. is it the <laughs> There's, there's yeah. enough data out there. That that's why I sort of like to ask somebody like you because there's so I much out there. It's just like, yes, yes. I just want to know if it was hot or cold. I didn't need 78 <laughs> graphs. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I'm going to, I'll keep, I'll keep poking while other folks are talking and I can always chime in after. How's that? Great. That's great. Thanks, Val. Well, thanks, Val. Um, Amy, uh, what do you have for us this week? Well, the library is still closed to the public, but we've um, expanded our curbside hours. So we're basically running curbside during our normal, what would be our normal open hours, um, at least part of the day for those days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, we applied for the Vermont Humanities Council and Vermont Arts Council Emergency Relief Fund grant. It was some money that they got through the CARES Act. We didn't apply immediately because we felt that the library is probably in a fairly good place financially, but um, toward the end of their grant round, they were really pushing it out to libraries because only four libraries had applied and, and they felt like that there should be more. Um, we just found out today that we were waitlisted for that money. So there, the, there are two reasons why we ultimately decided to apply. And one was because they made the push. And the second one was because they felt like if there was a need in Vermont for organizations to have money and they didn't have enough money to fund everyone, then they could advocate for more if there was proof of a need. We got so many applications that we feel like we need to have some more money so that we can help. So we thought that that um, would be a benefit either way. Anyway, we are waitlisted and we will find out by July 6th if we do get some of those funds. Um, in addition to being open for curbside, we are going to set up a story walk. I just need to get permissions from people in the village because it won't be on the rail trail this year. It will be in the village where I feel we can keep an eye on it better and it will also be spaced out a little bit better. Um, the rail trail is really busy and I do think that people will cluster around the pages there, whereas in Hyde Park Village, I think that people can be spaced out a little bit more. Um, we also were going to get a Wi-Fi extender installed this week, but we just ran into just one little glitch, which was privacy of our records of our computers. And so we're just, um, having someone else come in to do it that can do what's called segregate the, the um, connection so that there's sort of an inside connection and an outside connection. So right now people can sit outside the library and access our Wi-Fi, but with an extender, they will be able to go further away from the library so that more people can can have access to that Wi-Fi. And um, the Department of Libraries has um they can't really require us to do anything but it's really urged every library to have a reopening plan so the trustees met on tuesday we decided to start we talked about what some of those phases would be in a reopening plan and then once a plan is created we can sort of vote they can sort of vote and decide what phase they want to enter into um ken geiersbach one of our trustees said uh Festina Lente, which is Latin for hasten slowly. So I kind of feel like that's our mantra right now. But, um, you know, we're in a good phase right now. We've, we're in a phase that we feel comfortable with. The public seems really excited. We're working with the school to get summer reading stuff out there to kids. Um, there, there seems to be some really good love for, for that. And then uh, next phase could just be like by appointment. But once that plan is in place, we'll have a better idea. And I think that's all for the library. Amy, how's your, is you're getting open more, mm -hmm. how's your, how's your use of the library? You know, your number of folks that are doing things. 
do you mean the people who are requesting materials yeah. through curbside? Yeah. 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 So that is, um, I think that expanding our hours has, was a, the best thing to do. We just, the two days that we were open were kind of, we just weren't enough. And so we get requests every day, all the time. I have really good communication with Ruth and Christy. I'm putting the library's email out there to the public. So, you know, best best case scenario is people are reserving books online because it's easiest for us to manage. But I don't mind if people send me a list through an email. And then if I'm not there that day, I forward that to Christy or Ruth and we can get those books together for people. I also, we're also really happy to do the personal shopping kind of a thing where people will call and say, oh, you know what I like, some mysteries, you know, and we're happy to to choose those and get those ready for people as well. So um, I got a phone call from somebody who uses this library. She lives in Waterville and she just was made me feel so happy because she just said that, you know, just gave me a really great pep talk about how grateful she is for the library being closed when it was closed and slowly reopening now and um, felt that we were being really respectful to ourselves and to the public and just gave us really good kudos for all of that. So, and that made me, that was a nice, nice feedback. Well, and that's, yeah, it, it's, um, I, and I think getting the, the extender is a great idea. Um, they can sit in the park across from the library now. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Susan, that is actually, that's a really great um, point, and they probably will be able to. And, yeah, and I just kind of, yeah. the only concern that I have is I just know that people who don't have a computer or a phone or the device to search their email or to do whatever they need to do. Those are the people who I, I kind of think that we're losing a little bit, but we'll figure that out. We also have a wireless printer. So Ruth and I had an outdoor social distance mask wearing staff meeting today. Um, yeah. and, and we talked about maybe figuring out how we can uh, do some wireless printing hours for people too. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I think you guys are, I think you're doing a great job. Are you finding Thanks. sort of like, you're getting back and as with more hours as you get <laughs> the problem when you're not in your regular hours you go oh that okay what day am I supposed to remember you gotta you know that's all right. time you gotta it was too time. much for people and then we were also <laughs> needing to be careful about when materials were returned because we want to quarantine them for a certain amount of time right. Right. and if we're only right. in here two days a week and we couldn't keep track of when the books came back and so that was just it was too much for the public to manage so now that it's a little bit we've expanded it's it's changed for everybody it's great it's, it's regular except you just can't go in so that sort of well that's pretty much to regular. and we are really um the book orders that we have placed just haven't been sent so we're just waiting for new books to come in but we will be updating i will be updating that page on our website so as you know susan and other people who come into the library that new shelf is where 98% of everybody who walks in the library goes to, to see what's new. And uh, you can't really search that way in our online catalog. And that can be really frustrating for people. So we're going to update that page every time, every time we get a new book, if it's one book or if it's 50 books, that page will be updated so that people can see what's new. You can't tell if it's on the shelf, somebody has it checked out, you then have to go to the catalog and find out if it's available or not, but at least you can see what new authors books are in the library you're, you're going to have to develop amy it's like you know when you go to a bakery or a candy store and you point out what you want you're going to have to do a nice big plexiglass window where the new books are and people can come point at the books <laughs> you know that is that is not an impossible task we can yeah. work that out that could happen on the children's room on church street You've given me something to think about. <laughs> like, oh, wait, look, give me, I want that one. I want that one, you know, and you don't, yes. you know, when you point at the bakery and the candy, you don't get to taste it. It's close enough. Just, oh, I want to, I want to see it. I want to that see it. That is completely <laughs> possible. That is really possible. You, you've given me something to, I mean, that might happen. <laughs> well, thanks, Amy and uh, Susan. Um, and I just offer Amy that if you had any, uh, questions about wireless, um, you can always uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. I've done a number of uh, large wireless installations. 
Oh, um, cool. We, we use Eugene Dombach, who is, you know, approved by the town. But yeah, that, thank you so much. Yep. Um, Joan, do you have anything uh, for the group? Um, you're, you're muted if you're trying. Um, you have nothing, um, Joan, to for the group? Okay. Um, does anybody have any um, last comments or questions for the group? Okay. Well, then I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And our next meeting would be June 6th. Well, with that, thank you everybody for attending this. Do you have something, Ron? No, just to say goodbye to everybody and have a good weekend. Thanks, Ron. Oh, you yeah. too. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks, Carol. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.